Once upon a time, the Duke of Normandy, Robert the Devil, was riding along the walkway of his castle at Falaz when he looked down on the river and he saw a beautiful fair maiden washing her clothes. Her name was Aleva, and they soon fell in love. He took her as his mistress. Marriage was completely out of the question because of her low birth. She was a tenor's daughter after all. Nevertheless, she gave him a child, a son called William. William the Bastard. This is his story. William never got the chance to know his father properly. Robert set out on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem via Constantinople, but fell ill and died on his way back. At the age of seven or eight, William became Duke. In those turbulent early years, William had to grow up fast. He had to face off several formidable challenges to the ducal throne, including Guy of Burgundy, who led a rebellion against William. Around 1050, William the Bastard marries his cousin Matilda of Flanders to consolidate his power. Pope Leo IX, he isn't really happy with this incestuous marriage. So, to redeem themselves, they each build an abbey, one for the man and one for the women. We're now in the man's abbey, the abbey of saint Etienne. William proves himself to be a ruthless military commander and administrator. He successfully unifies Normandy, but he harbours greater ambitions. In 1051, his distant cousin, Edward the Confessor, King of England, promises William the English throne. But William isn't the only one who wishes to be king. In a fortuitous turn of events, a powerful Anglo-Saxon nobleman was shipwrecked on the French coast and got captured by a count. His name? Harold Godwinson. William demands that Harold be turned over to him, and Harold then accompanies William to battle against William's enemy, Conan II, Duke of Brittany. While crossing into Brittany, past the fortified abbey of Mont Saint Michel, two of William's soldiers almost drown in quicksand. They are rescued in the nick of time by none other than Harold himself. We're walking towards Mont Saint-Michel. Of course, the NPCs, they're walking up there as though they're not aware that there's a much more beautiful path here. But we take this route, the route less traveled. See you later. As we can see on the tapestry of Bayeux, William honours Harold with a gift of arms. But Harold is only set free ha, when he swears a solemn oath on holy relics, promising that he will support William's claim to the English throne. However, King Edward dies and the very next day, Harold crowns himself King of England. William is of course furious and he decides to organize a fleet of warships to attack England. The Norman invaders try to provoke Harold into action by burning houses. 
women and children flee, fearing for their lives. On 14 October 1066, the two armies clash at the Battle of Hastings. Although Harold had successfully repelled an invasion by the King of Norway only two weeks before, he was now defeated after nine hours of hard fighting. He died on the battlefield after an arrow struck his eye. In the years that follow, William had to fight many battles to maintain his reign. In 1086, he finally returned to mainland Europe. While he had been away, his trusty wife Matilda had ruled Normandy in his stead. When she dies, aged about 52, William was so sad that he swore to give up hunting, his favourite sport. Church of Saint Gilles, Queen Matilda was buried in 1083, that's almost a thousand years ago. She was said to have made, with the help of her chambermaids, of course, the tapestry of Bayeux. Although this is probably not true, she was a very virtuous woman. On her stone, it is written that she loved piety and that she comforted the poor. In 1087, William tries to conquer the French town of Mart, but by this time, is no slender young man anymore. In fact, he's huge, he's corpulent, he's Henry VIII levels of obese. And as he's riding his horse, his stomach is thrown forward against the pommel, the forward part of the saddle. His internal organs are fatally ruptured and six weeks later, he dies. As is his wish, his body is taken from Rouen to Caen and he's buried here in his very own abbey. As they try to force William's huge corpse into a small tomb, the body bursts open and a foul stench spreads throughout the church. No amount of myrrh or incense could drive away that smell. But as we approach his grave. I do want to speak about him with at least a degree of reverence. Not just because he's my ancestor, but because he's the ancestor of millions upon millions of Europeans. Now I've hardly seen anyone here today, but I think this should become a pilgrimage site, a special place for Europeans to gather and celebrate a shared heritage and history.
Although William is not really a key figure in French historiography, all English school children still learn his name. After all, after 1066, Norman French became the language of the English court government and the upper class, and it stayed that way for almost 300 years. William gave us cider, gave us surnames, gave us words like pork and beef, purchase, and even the words noble and nobility. How very fitting. William also constructed the Tower of London, which still dominates the skyline of that city today. This legend, he gave us a legacy which is still tangible.